Hi everyone and welcome to Pro Tools Answers where three Pro Tools experts discuss, demonstrate and elaborate on your Pro Tools questions put to the community in Avid's official Facebook support forum. Anders, Andy and myself Dave take you deep into the workings of Pro Tools technique and ethos to help the user community understand and get the best out of their investment and we hope that our tutorials and discussions are helping you guys do just that. In this episode we're going to be looking into a question from Michael who asks... Ah! For some reason, my Pro Tools hasn't been consolidating the audio region when I render multiple clips with an audio suite plugin. That is, it leaves the resulting audio as separate clips. Have I accidentally unchecked or changed something? And, and the answer is yes. So uh, let's move on now. <laughs> <laughs> Damn you, Anders, you beat me to the answer. Sorry. <laughs> I, was, I was just about to get there, but... You Damn it! I ruined your your joke. You stole uh, my. You, you didn't ruin my yeah. joke, Anders. You stole my joy. Uh, sorry about that, Dave. Sorry, it's, sorry, sorry. So sorry. We'll talk about it later. Yeah. <laughs> so. no, may, maybe we should reset and redo this so you can. Like. <laughs> it's, Anders is not that bad. It's fine. I'll be fine. I'll only require three sessions of therapy to get over it. Um, we'll just jump in. Okay, so where Michael's uh, question uh, is is lying is using audio suite plugins. Now, typically when we're using plugins in Pro Tools, uh, we're inserting AAX plugins uh, onto the inserts. These are the real-time plugins where Pro Tools uh, processes the, the, the effects of the plugin um, in real time. But if you don't want to do that and you just want to apply the uh, the effects of an EQ or, or a compressor, on a clip by clip basis. Um, we can do that offline using the audio suite plugins up here. And if I open up uh, EQ7 uh, just as, a, as an easy option, which should be open. Oh, it's on this is the thing about having two screens. <laughs> so um, the, the way that these work is that I'll make a selection of a clip and then I'll make some changes on my EQ. We can render it using the uh, the, the the audition. Uh, sorry, we can audition it. Sorry, um, using the uh, the previewing button down there. And we did an episode a couple of weeks ago on on how the auditioning path audio path works. Uh, so if you're pressing that button, expecting to hear some uh, some audio, and you're not hearing anything, you better go and check that plugin uh, that uh, that video out as well. Um, also, bear in mind that if there's lots of audio at the beginning of the clip before we actually get to the audio itself. That may also mean that you don't hear anything immediately um, because it's going to be auditioning directly from the beginning of the, the, the clip that you've selected. So if you've got lots of audio before that, you're not going to hear it. And we're not pressing the play button either. We're just using this button here to audition our stuff. We're not using any of the play controls in Pro Tools. Now, what, what are you hearing? Sorry, since you're, since you're there, and, and what outputs are you hearing that audition? Oh, well, let's go and have a look, because I am i don't think I'm hearing anything through my headphones at the moment, because I'm running off of a different path. But it's set to outputs one and two, which is that one. I'm monitoring through these, so I'm not going to hear anything back um, on my right. headphones. So it's, so it's your audition path, so it, it that's what it determines what holes it comes out of. Yes, and, and the, the way that my is set up at the moment is because I'm monitoring through LadioCast, which is outputs 15 and 16, because I've got my audition path set to output one and two. I'm not gonna hear anything, so I'd have to change that to 15 and 16 to be able to hear it. Okay, so what we can do here is then, um, what seems to be happening is that where Michael is selecting multiple clips, Actually, let's just let's set this up very simply, actually. Uh, sorry, let me reopen that one again. Um, I'll select this, this vocal clip here. Um, I'm going to make my changes on my EQ. That's going to sound amazing, right? I'm All the way up. Right there. That's, that, that's, that's warmth. That's warmth you don't get. And we'll, we will press the render button, and that is going to end up resulting in a new file. And if we head over to the clips list, um, what was it called? G there we go. Box something right there. It's named itself based on the name of the clip, and because it's been processed with EQ three, the seven band, it's inserted the uh, the text EQ seven band to just denote that it's been processed by EQ three, and this is going to be a separate file, isn't it? It is. It is. 
Awesome, but in this case, he's probably selected multiple files, so you've got a couple of them I after do. each other. So, yeah. so what he's probably done is selected multiple files mm -hmm. and then hit the render button. And then there is a setting for uh, for this, how, how they will output, right? Yes, there is. So uh, we've got two options here. We can either, because I've got four files selected here, I can either render them and keep them as individual files, which is clicking create individual files, hit render, Pro Tools will make us four versions and it basically just keeps them separate so it's rendering those four clips separately or if we select create continuous file and then hit render it's going to render us all four of those together and create one clip out of it so this may be where the the crux of his uh, his thing lies it's it's, it's certainly the, his his question that that right there mm. um, there's a third option there that I think is dangerous enough that we should mention it <laughs> yes go on then Andy oh okay um, so so if we undo what what Dave just did pop it back there you go um, and we let's let's uh, you know, because it's not my session, I'm going, yeah, why not? Let's go ahead and do it. Um, go ahead. <laughs> Let's not. This is a live session. I'm not going to overwrite right. anything. <laughs> we will so, talk so, theoretically on this one, Andrew. Oh, theoretically. Oh, oh, come on. <laughs> um, so, so there's a third option, which is overwrite files. And this is destructive. And this is it does what it says it's going to do. It will overwrite the original files. It's powerful. It's awesome when you want it but you generally don't want it right only only when you want to go back and you've got all these files that are perhaps your exports mm -hmm. um hopefully you've got backup copies somewhere else in case things go wrong mm -hmm. but you've got your files and you want to normalize them or you want to do you know usually it's a batch processing thing that i do with it mm -hmm. and it will leave those files named exactly what they were it overwrites them and they're changed forever um but for anything in a session i i tend to shy away from it. And it's just one of those things that sounds like it shouldn't be a big deal. It sounds like it shouldn't be a problem, but it is the one thing you probably want to avoid if you ever want to be able to undo what you just did. Yeah, especially if you're making EQ changes like this. Let's not, you're right. let's not use, <laughs> let's <Probably>. not use <laughs> over right there. <laughs> it can sound great, come on, man. <laughs> Yeah, that's with the, that that's broken microphone territory right there. Um, yeah, right there. So we we but we've got some other options over here as well. So Anders, we've got a couple of options here. Ah, I think that's an Andy. Uh, that's a perfect Andy uh, subject right there. Yeah, I think um, so. So let's do something here, Dave, real quick. Um, do me a flavor and take the second clip that you have. Uh huh. Um, do uh, bring clip gain down on it. So that it's noticeably softer, mm -hmm. and uh, go ahead and consolidate that, please. Great. So, so let's assume that this is um, this is a line. This is a, a spoken line where somebody is speaking in a sentence, and these are the individual phrases. Mm -hmm. Now, um, let's change this uh, plugin to normalize, if you would please, because I think that's one that'll show it fairly really descriptively okay. okay great so we got normalized now um normalize is just kind of a great teaching tool because it's, it's so basic and it's just it's got everything you need and it just doesn't have anything that's distracting um like like a graphic user interface um so what i'm going to do here is let's create um individual clips so so let's go back to individual clips great but let's select all four of those clips mm -hmm. Great. And we're going to go, and you've already got it set up here, we're going to go clip by clip instead of entire selection. Mm -hmm. And what it's going to do is it's going to take a look at the first clip, normalize that, then stop. Then take a look at the second clip, normalize that, and then stop. And then it's going to take each individual clip as a separate thing. Go ahead and hit render and let's see what we got. Okay. Creating individual files still. There we go. Okay, and then just zoom down, you'll see they're all this, you know, they're all obviously they're, they're different uh, mm -hmm. phrases, but they're all hitting the same uh, thing. Both of them are right. Um, by the way, could you do this with create continuous file? 
absolutely the process mode and the create continuous file are are unrelated although they tend to kind of you know people care about both of those in different workflows mm. yeah that's fantastic i i love that little button it's so versatile it, you you really get what you what you want there and you can uh make up your mind uh so there's this third button which now is set to mono mode so let's talk about that guy and that is if you've got a stereo file and the stereo file is obviously has a left and a right channel. It doesn't need to be a stereo file. It could be a file one or seven one also, but let's talk about stereo. And, uh, and if there is difference between left and right channel in the volume, uh, if you are in mono mode, uh, can you click the little button, Dave? I can. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so the mono mode will basically, as with, with Andy's uh, example here, will uh, analyze both of these channels as one unit and making the, the one side that's louder, mm. only slightly louder and the softer side equally much louder, keeping the relative imbalance in those volumes. Whereas the multi input mode will analyze left and right individually and adjust the, the to normalize accordingly, so so individually, basically. Great, cool. And so, that's important because. Go ahead. No, go ahead, Andy. And that's super important because, um, especially with stereo files, if if your stereo file has some ambience or if it's got some panning built in, mm. not choosing the right one can can you know take a, a a stereo file that's off center and put it right back in the center. Yeah, no, another example could be uh, acoustic guitar recordings where you've got the, 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 the body microphone, which has a higher, typically a higher SPL than the one pointing at the neck. Mm -hmm. um, and that the, the neck one can sometimes be a little bit lower. So using that mode can then just bring those relatively closer together. Yeah. Great. So that's three great uh, techniques for audio suite. Yeah, yeah. So and this, uh, all of these controls are common to every plugin, aren't they? So, yes, uh, the uh, the um, the the one where you overwrite your files is not always available, depending on what plugin you're using and what other set settings. Mm -hmm. So there might be this destructive feature might not always be available to you. Andy, did I say that that correctly? You're you're hundred percent right. Yeah. Um, and I'll add one other thing since we're kind of geeking out on, on audio suite. Um, Dave is 100% right, 0% wrong on the fact that there's a new file created because we're not using overwrite files. Mm -hmm. However, two clips have been created. One is a whole file clip and one is a subset clip. So if you take a look over there, if you, if you take a look over in the clips list, you're seeing you've got uh, G Vox Normal Nine, mm -hmm. and right on, which is a whole file clip because it's it's you know it's in bold text. That's the file, right? That's the entire file from start to finish. Mm -hmm. But right underneath it is the the file that actually is on the track, and that is G Vox Norm O Nine Dash O One, which is the subset clip. What's up with that? Yeah, uh, maybe I can explain that. So down in the right corner, just next to the render button, uh, it says two, uh, two seconds. And that is the handle length. So basically when you're making a selection, uh, Protoss does not only process this selection, but it adds that handle length to the whole file clip that it will generate on your hard drive. And will then again, as uh, Andy just explained, uh, display a subset clip without these two seconds but you can still trim out mm. and you can still make uh, fades in and fades out or cross fades over these because Protoss has thought of that and of course the handle length can be set to uh, just about any length I'm, I'm not sure if there is a is, is there a max value to this oh, well the max value actually is the button next to it which is whole file right so if you click whole file and turn that blue then, then your handles don't, don't actually matter. It goes great, it goes stupid. And it's just basically going to create a new clip out of the whole file from that so you can trim it. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. so even though you're using just one second, it will it will treat the entire yeah. recorded. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, that's a great one. Interesting. Cool. So using audio suites, it, it's a great way of, uh, of applying a setting to 
to a bunch of clips. E EQ is a perfect example, really, where you want, maybe you want to save an insert or you want to uh, reduce on plug-in processing or maybe if you if, if you, you want to process your audio with something like uh, PSP Neon's uh, high, resolu high resolution plugin, which I think introduced them like 50,000 samples of delay if you were to use it on the track. Um, so it's, it's unusable on, on a track by track basis, but you could certainly apply it to the tracks um, if you applied it in non real time. Right, so it can, it can yeah, be used in that I, kind of Yeah, it's scenario. used a lot uh, so for, for dialogue editing, uh, post-production, using Isotope or, or other noise reduction plugins and stuff like that. Same problem there, a lot of latency. And, and yep. UAD users. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and one other thing that, I mean, at the risk of diverting even further, um, one of the cool things that you can do is you can, let's say you've got a compressor and your compressor is just sitting there just doing one thing um, and you want to render the file rather than use DSP, you can copy the plugin settings from the AAX plugin and paste them to the audio suite version. Oh, wow, that's cool. Absolutely. Have you seen that? Have you done that, Anders? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, yep. I, I, I tend to just save settings in the AAX ones and then just recall them. You can, but it's, the it's shift command. Um, yeah. C and then B, something like that. Ah. Very cool. Well, I hope, certainly hope that explains uh, what could potentially be going wrong if you're doing something like this and you're seeing different effects to what you're expecting when you're rendering uh, your plugin. So hopefully that's helped you guys. Um, if you haven't done so already, uh, hit like on our video. It really helps us, uh, really helps the reach of the channel, uh, getting to other Pro Tools users. And uh, if you could see a way to subscribe to our channel as well, that would be fantastic. You can hit the bell icon so you get notified every time we upload our new videos. Um, if you head over to ProToolsAnswers.com, you can can see what we're up to over there. You can subscribe over there as well, where Andy will send you an email every week uh, to tell you what we're doing. And if you fancy taking that next step and supporting Pro Tools Answers, because uh, obviously we do all of this for nothing, um, we are kind of largely uh, kind of uh, community supported. Uh, you can join our own inner circle over there as well. That would uh, uh, th that would be so much greatly appreciated. Um, so all it leaves us to say is uh, thank you very thank much you. to Anders. You uh, thank you to Andy. Thank you to you guys. My name's Dave. This is Pro Tools Answers, and we're out.